sad. It's sad. But it's not surprising. <laughs> it's not so, so surprising. So, protests happening in Nigeria, and if anybody's shocked, if anybody is somehow taken aback, then you must be living under five or six rocks. It's not about being surprised or shocked. It's like, this should have happened ages ago. Nigeria is a mess. And Nigeria isn't a mess because of lack of resources or just how um, poor the country is naturally. It is in this mess by design, via greed and via corruption, which is why people are saying, no, like, no, enough is enough. But here's the thing, though. This rekindles thoughts back to SARS. So really, SARS was really about police brutality and how he had this special task force who were tasked to really, you know, solve um, robberies within the country. So it started against how brutal their methods were, but it then sort of expanded into, oh, no, yeah, we know that's bad, but no, no, let's actually address issues within the country because SARS is just one little aspect of how messed up the country was. But it's happened, it's happened, but then it sort of went away. So what everyone is saying and what, you know, I've been discussed with my family and everything is, are people now going to be like, no, 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 this is where things change. This is where things should fully change because Nigeria has to change. Or will this happen loud, 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 and then go away and then we'll just go back to square one? Because after SARS, nothing changed. Nothing really changed. Because SARS was supposed to be, this is the tipping point of where, no, the people have had enough. But nothing changed. Um, you see, <sighs> things are bad. <laughs> you see, you know things are bad when you call your folks in Nigeria and they say, oh, yeah, how are things in Nigeria? And guys are like, I can't even lie to you. So guys can't even lie to say, oh, no, no, come back to Nigeria. No, by the way, no, 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 no. Okay, if you come, come if you have to come. If you don't have to come, you're good. Because <laughs> I remember like one of my aunties, um, once she left Nigeria, she's like, no, I'm gone. I'm never coming back. And people say, okay, why didn't you come back? But she's like, no, I'm never, I'm never coming back. I think she came back once for, um, uh, obviously, her father bought grandfathers for my grandpa's um, funeral. And that was the only time she came back because she had to come back for that. But since then, she's not been back. My, her daughters, my cousins, they've never even been to Nigeria. Because she's like, no, this country is never going to change. You know, and as much as we say to her, like, bro, we should have hope. When you just look at how much has really changed in the country. Because you know things are bad. You know things are bad when it is 2,000 naira to a pound. 2,000 naira to a single pound. That is disgusting. <laughs> bro, I wasn't that far ago when it was like, it was, I think it was like 600 naira to a pound. 2,000 naira to a pound. It's, it's a complete mess. It's a complete and utter mess. Um, and then, see, see, for people who don't know about Nigeria, I think, because really, for people who know, you know. For people who know, you know. Shout out to your boy Adaj on my Niger peeps out there, RDS, all you guys. But for people that don't know, be like, wait, wait. is it that? Is it, uh, is it because Nigeria isn't Chad. <laughs> Chad is a country that is just nat naturally poor, so it is what it is. Niger Nigeria have resources, which is what it makes it particularly messed up. Because if you don't know, Nigeria produces crude, crude oil. So where my mother is from, which is Delta State, that state in Delta State, they produce oil. So Shell have a base in Delta State and... Every weekend, you see Dutch guys, Shell guys go there every single weekend because that's where they have their business. So your next question will be like, how is a country who produces crude oil, how are they poor? So this is, I mean, I'll expand upon that, but this is just, just, just something to help. So in Nigeria, oil has been more of a cost than a blessing. Weak institutions of state and poor governance in managing the vast revenues have led the country to fail to realize its full potential. In a textbook example of what academics know as the resource cost. Listen carefully. First coined by 
Prof Professor Richard Oti in 1994, the term refers to the inability of nations to use their windfall wealth to improve their population's lots and boost their economies. The rich natural resources bring corruption and poverty to a nation rather than positive economic development and counterintuitively. Um, so counter intuitively, these countries end up with lower growth and development than those without natural resources. So it's like a weird one. Sometimes if you have a lot of something, that can actually be bad than if you hardly had anything. So it's like, so for instance, I know a lot of my friends and guys that I know who do business in Nigeria, but they actually live in Ghana. Ghana don't have anywhere near the resources that Nigeria have. But a lot of Nigerians actually live in Ghana because Ghana is just a lot more organized as a, a country than Nigeria is. So you say, why is, why is this the, the issue? Greed. Greed. The issue is the money is there. But when a governor someone within government receives this money, instead of redistributing it, giving it to the people and actually building structure to help improve housing, improve electricity, improve the roads, access to jobs, they keep it to themselves. <laughs> they keep it to themselves. And a lot of people have gotten rich because money that was supposed to be redistributed to the country and, f and to help the people, they kept them to themselves. So it's, it's, it's greed. So with natural resources comes wealth, and with wealth comes greed. And this has been Nigeria's problem forever, which is the people that are supposed to govern the country have taken the money for themselves. I was speaking to one of my friends who used to work in government, but no, no longer. I said, okay, and, and he was a guy where I would never think of him working in government. So I asked him, now you're like, wait, why are you in government? He says that it's where you make money. <laughs> so he said, like, governments and being in government is where you make money. It's not where you go there to help the people, improve the lives of, of people, it's where you go and make money. In 2024, Nigeria are still using generators. There's no light. You have to use a converter, power generators. And he says, how can a country with the kind of wealth that Nigeria have not have light? And you're still using generators. And, and those useless guys called Nepal don't bring light. Oh, it's very simple. It's a cabal. It's a money-making scheme. There are people who make a lot of money in the industry of generators. So if you now give light... You no longer have a generator. If you no longer have a generator, people who make money of selling generators no longer make money. So there needs to be no light so that those people can make lots of money off the selling of generators that people will need if there's no light. Greed. Corruption. But you say to yourself that, like, how have the people not rioted? Why have the people not rioted? Why is it only now that they're rioting when this has been prevalent forever? If not for religion, if not for religion, Nigeria would, would, would fall into anarchy. What has been stopping Nigeria from falling into complete total anarchy is religion. I was watching a program, and um, again, you guys probably don't know, this, this famous politician called MK, MK or Abiola. You wouldn't know him, but Nigerians should know him. A very prominent politician in the mid, early mid-90s. So his son was speaking on a program, and his son said that um, this whole protest is God testing Nigerians. And this is a test from, from God. And that has what has always kept the people quiet. So while those governors have been corrupt, stealing all the money, and enjoying all the money that should be given to, to, the, to the people, the regular people are like, you know what? This is God showing me a sign that I just we just need to just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. And it is that religion that has stopped people from rioting and say, wait, wait, hang on. This this doesn't make any, any sense. This is unfair. 
So this is not this is not like a test or whatever a test. No, this is about injustice. <laughs> it's about injustice. You see, you know a country by how the regular man lives. That's how you know a country. You don't know a country by how the 1% lives or by how the very rich live. No. You know a country by how the regular man lives. And for the regular man in Nigeria, it's hard. Oh, it's hard. <laughs> it's very hard. So, this is like, my thing is, the problem with Nigeria, it's, 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 it's deep. It is very deep. Like for me, in a perfect world, I'd be living and enjoying in Nigeria because of the amazing weather, the amazing food, the incredible people, the amazing com community. In a perfect world. But the reality is, we, if you want a, a life, it's, 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 it can't be operating in Nigeria. That's why we left Nigeria, which is why my auntie left and never came back. You see, for me, we come back. I know people who've left and they've never come back. Because those guys are saying, no, this country will, will never change. So there are people who've never been back. So for me, there, and we, even within my family, we are split. There's some of us in family that believe that it's bad, but you have to hold out hope. So people like me, I hold out hope. The other people in my family are like, no, Nigeria is a lost cause. Because the problem is deep, and it is deeply psychological. Because if you don't change the psyche of the people, and which is why... Nigeria had a chance. They had a chance to elect um, Peter Obi, who was someone new, someone fresh, someone to give a whole new outlook. And I was even considering going to Nigeria to try to place a vote. But I was like, you know what? And I was right. Do you know why? Your vote means nothing. <laughs> because as you saw, votes were not counted. Votes were thrown away. People were intimidated at the voting Booths, hence why Peter B was fighting so much in court because they said, no, no, this, the, the voting had too much corruption. It was not a fair vote. So the issue with Nigeria is it is a psychology and a mentality that hasn't changed. But which is why the hope is, let's see what happens with these protests. Again, I hope for protests is peaceful and I don't want anyone to, to, to be killed. You know, and you, and you don't want any violence. Because what I want is change. Where change how the governments operate. Change how politicians use money. Get rid of the greed. Get rid of the lust of money. Get rid of having mansions upon mansions upon mansions. Get rid of the lust, the gluttony, and the yearning of just ridiculous wealth that you don't need. So my hope is that we're like, you have a government and you have the people that actually care about the country, <laughs> you know, because that is the issue. People in power, they don't really, they don't care about the people. They just care about themselves and making wealth for themselves. Because Nigeria can be an amazing country. You go anywhere in the world, you go and you look at who, who, who are the lawyers, who are the bankers, who are the artists. Who are, the, who are the guys in, in all of these fields? It's Nigerians. Nigerians are naturally talented. They're naturally resourceful. They're naturally resourceful peop people. And the people have just been de de denied. Because that's why, because even whenever I go to Nigeria, I feel bad. Because I'm like, the country shouldn't be like, like this. In 2024, you can't have messed up roads. How am I, I'm in an airport and lights is taken in an airport. In an airport when we are waiting for our, for our bags. <laughs> you know. It's, you know, so. And I think my hope is that the people have had enough. And my, my hope for this is that there's change. There's full change through everything. Where, no, the regular man must be able to live and exist. Nobody cares about the 1%. I don't care about the people who are rich, living on this. No, no. That, so whenever you go to Nigeria and you see all oh, this amazing stuff, they say, no, 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 no. That's not the real Nigeria. The real Nigeria is how does a regular man live? How does a regular man live in Lagos Island? 
in Jos, in Kaduna, in Kano, in Enugu, <laughs> in Medugri? Where, how do those regular people live? You know? So, you know, it's like my hope, maybe somewhere down the line, is to go back and live in Nigeria and in my own little way, try and change things in my own way and to live there. Because that is my hope, is to live fully my last few days in Nigeria. You know, because I've been here, I've been in England, I've been in Switzerland, I've been in Germany, I've been in Uganda, Ghana, I've been in all these places, I've been in France. But when I go to Nigeria, as messed up as the country is, the country is messed up. It's very messed up. It is the closest thing to home. It is the closest thing to home. So it is sad and it is painful seeing the country like, 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 like this. It is sad seeing that in, in 2023, 20, 2024, 20, you don't have light. You don't have light. There are people living that are dead poor. You, you're looking at some, at, some, at some houses where it's like, this is, this is like stuff from like caveman times. In 2023, in a country that produces crude oil, in a country that does have wealth, where there are people who are millionaires in dollars. And the, I'm sorry, this, I mean, this is ridiculous. 2,000 naira to a pound? But again, you have to hope for the best, because if you don't have hope, then, then, then what's the point? You just have to hope, hope for the best, and just hope that there's, there's a brighter day for now. Jury and hopefully with these protests, the people can just make demands and say, no, 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 no. Enough is enough. We are we are just not going to pray away. Because that's the thing. That's the hope is that, oh no, no, just keep praying. You know, you've been tested by God. Just keep praying. No, 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 no. There's no more time for prayer, no more time for hope, no more time for you know, no, God will show that we know. It's not time for no action. Change now and make a country that is beneficial for the people. And last thing I'll say here. I remember when I went to Japan. I went to Japan like ages ago. And the thing that struck me about Japan was this is a country where the people in power care about the people living in the country. Everything in Japan is about what do the people need? What will help with the people? What will help with the regular man? Whether it's transport, whether it's food, whether it's shops, whether how things are organized, everything is just done. So when you're in power, the main aim is how, do, how can I help the collective? Because we are now a group. We're not individuals. We are a group. How can I help the collective? And that is how every country should, should be. <laughs> See, you know, if you're in governance, you know, you're not there to, to serve yourself. No, screw you. When you're in your governance, you are there to serve the people. So every action you make, everything you do, every cent that is spent is how can this cent be used to help the people, help the collective, help the common man, help the poor man. Forget about the rich. How can I help the regular person? Because your, the way we view your country is what is the poverty like? How does the regular man live? That is how we view your country. It's not about your mansions or your hotels or your extravagant restaurants. No one cares about that crap. How does a regular man live? That is what dictates whether your country is something or nothing. And because the regular man is suffering and the regular man is saying, no, 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 the way that we're living is trash, your country is trash. If your regular man's life is trash, your country is trash. And that is what these protests are about.